How awful. How do you podcast? How do you podcast? How do you podcast? How do you, how do you? Without me. <laughs> Wait, how do me? you podcast without, you better not podcast without, oh my God, do we have the same nail color? I literally thought that when you sent me a picture of your nails. No, mine's a little darker and yeah. sparkler. Me. We have matching cuticle boo-boos though. <laughs> yeah, we have purple nails. Guys, we're dating. We're dating nail places because... Our nail place of eight years has just, they I don't know. I think they've gotten comfortable with us guys. Yeah. And they just don't do a good job anymore. So we're dating nail places. <laughs> Trying them out. And so far it's not going too well. It's hard to find a good, hey, if you have any good nail salons. In, in the Valley. The San Fernando Valley, mm-hmm. preferably the Studio City Sherman Oaks-ish. Area. Toluca Lake-ish area. Shout it out because we are in search Desperately searching for a good place. I think we're accidentally drinking a Chardonnay. I thought it was kind of dark. Let's look. It doesn't say. It just says Honey Beast. Honey Beast. Chardonnay. I guess it's good, though. I guess it does say that, doesn't it? (laughs) It literally (laughs) says Chardonnay. It just said Honey Beast on the front, and I didn't look at the back. It's cute. It's got little bee like you. I know. I have it over there, but I don't think that was a Chardonnay. Maybe the... No, we don't do that. We're we, ladies. We don't. We're ladies. Who are you? I'm Tanya Lee. I'm B. They probably forgot. I'm a lady. You're a lady. Sorry, we uh, were not around last week. We, uh, well, I. <laughs> well, had, both of us. Yes, that's true. I had a very busy week and uh, I was working many yeah. hours. She was, she was uh, what they lovingly referred to as Hell Week in production. Correct. And I was starting not a new job, but back at my old job. And my brain was tired remembering all the old systems and how to be a boss. Yeah. So anyway, we're back. Sorry for the whole We are. You've this... waited for paranormal and cults oh so long. Oh so long. I don't know if it's going to be a great payoff. I don't know how I feel about my topic, but I also had no time to find a new one, even though I've had three weeks. It's true. Uh, my I actually think my topic was very interesting, but I didn't have time to like deep dive research. So yeah. it's kind of um, half-assed yeah. research a Same. little bit. But, a little bit. Sorry, guys. But it's but, still good. It's still interesting. But your your last episode, we were at the Roosevelt, and uh, I don't know if any of you guys picked up on it, but while Tanya was editing, we picked up on some pretty interesting EVPs. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. We could. Um, I think the one that stood out the most was when Mama. You... Mama. I don't even remember that one. You don't remember that one? Okay, go ahead. I want to see what yours is. Mama? Yeah. I didn't catch that one. Yeah, you did. I didn't put it in our video. You didn't? No, I didn't catch Mama. Okay, what did you catch? I don't remember talking about Mama. This is new When to me. we were talking, me and you were talking about how I'm maternal, and so children ghosts tend to cling to me. A male voice goes, Mama, like really quickly. Ooh, yuck. We listened. You picked it up because you showed it. it. Oh, I don't remember. And me and my mom were like, that said Mama. We like freaked out about it. Maybe because there was other ones. So yeah, you just, I and it was distracted. the first one you found. Well, the other one, the one that I thought was interesting when you asked, um, what, or like, is the person in this room not Montgomery Cliff? Yeah. And then it said, you're smart. Yeah. I forgot about that one. So, yeah. Is he, you munching very loud. Yeah, gosh. You jangle, jangle, and you munch, munch. Is he in Moosh her back? Is he's eating while Moosh stares at her? Yep, so at her butt. My, I pulled uh, a poo from Izzy's butt today. That's, like, way above your pay grade. Now I'm her assistant, and I don't know how this happened. <laughs> She's the boss. She is the boss. She tried to, um, HR issue get in my lap today, and, uh, she smelt, and lo and behold... <laughs> There's a half pushed out poo. I did find some poops on the floor today, so maybe she was. Maybe she was struggling <laughs> with getting her poops out. Yeah, I'll so maybe. That's her poo talk for today. Okay, so was there, any, <laughs> was there any? Okay, so we have the Mama EVP and we have the uh, Your Smart EVP. Did we have anything else? I feel like we, there was one moment. I don't remember what preceded it, but where it sounded like there was either like a moan or a no mm. or something. It was a male voice every well, time. Well, it was when we asked his name. Yeah. We didn't understand what it was. No. But there was like a, some, uh, there was like something. Like a noise yeah. of some sort, yeah. 
Um, it's interesting for sure. I think the best part of the Roosevelt Hotel that we did not get to tell you guys about because it was after we were done recording. Yeah. Was when we went to sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> we were both on edge, on high yes. alert, even though we didn't really feel like the room itself was haunted. But maybe, apparently it was. Maybe it was. It was just not, like, active. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but apparently it was. It, it it was just, I guess it needed more energy than we were giving it yeah. to manifest. Maybe all the electronics is why it picked up things. But yeah. at night, like, the only thing we had going was the TV. Yeah. But so we were falling asleep and we heard this like crunching noise. This, yeah. Like weird noise. She heard a crunching no, noise. No, you heard the, oh, weird, I heard the crunching. Like, oh, yeah. It was like a rustling noise. Yeah. Be like, it almost sounded like rocks falling a little yeah. bit. Be like, sits up and mm-hmm. she's like, what is that? Yeah. Do you hear that? And I was like, it's the ice melting from our wine. <laughs> we, had a, we had an ice bucket and a wine bottle was in it and the ice was was melting so that happened and there was another moment where um uh tanya doesn't snore but she has a deviated septum so sometimes i can hear her breathe and that's enough for me yeah it's Um, honestly it's my allergies yeah it's like a it's like a it's like a nose whistle if you will um and that was going on so i went to get my earplugs but they were in a plastic wrap and i was turned away from her trying to open my plastic wrap and she sits up she was doing that like it's me. It's fine. It's well, me. okay. To be fair, when you you literally didn't yeah, look I wasn't like you're moving because I was trying to be discreet, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, I didn't take the earplugs out of the plastic before I went to bed. Not not great at being discreet, but you looked like you were very asleep, and I yeah. just heard like plastic crinkling. Yeah, and I was like, Oh my god! Oh my it's god! Like I hear it so loudly. Yeah. What is that noise? And then I was like. Pulling the, I need like somebody to validation to validate yeah. what I'm hearing. So I like, she kinda, tapped me. I like tapped you and I was like, do you hear that? And you're like, it's me. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So we both had false alarms. Yeah, both had false alarms. I was the dummy that was like, I want to sleep on the Judy Garland side of the bed, and completely ignoring the fact that I was by like the sliding door <laughs> into the hallway that was haunted. <laughs> So I was literally, I would start to close my eyes and then immediately have to open it because I'm like, that door's going to open. <laughs> that door's going to open or I'm going to see something like peeking through the crack of the door no. or just something. I was convinced something was going to happen. So I didn't get any sleep. No, but, but we it was had a, a good fun time. night. Yeah, it was a good time. Tanya accidentally finding the ballroom was was, yeah, that was a fun. blast. Getting um, the personal ghost stories of the bellboy, mm-hmm. not from not Chris. his personal stories of the Roosevelt, but his personal life stories. He was a sweetheart. He was really nice. He was a sweetheart. Yeah. We will definitely go back to the Roosevelt, maybe not to stay the night, but to uh, to haunt it ourselves. Yeah, I did. <laughs> if you will. Why? Why are we dead? No, no. It, when you go to a place and you like, drink, oh, it's you're like, it's my haunt. haunt. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I get it. I want to go back to the library bar when it opens. Yeah. And the, the spare room. Yeah. We can just do like a round robin of the bars yeah. in the Roosevelt. It's that a good time. Epic. Yeah. It's a good time. It's a good night out. Anyway, anyway. Should, we, uh, should we give the folks what they've all been waiting for? What they've all been waiting for? Should we pause for wine first? Yes. Okay. Always. If we ever make t-shirts, that would make a really good t-shirt. Pause, pause for, for wine. wine. Ta-da. Chardonnay. Oh, should we read? We have, a, we have an email. I oh, forgot yes. about it. Yeah, you I, told me. Yeah, we have an email from, uh, we already told you he was our friend, Johnny, Mm -hmm. um, that I have not read. Tanya told me not to read it. Um, So I have no idea what this says. She said, I'll find find it very interesting. Let's see. From our good pal, Johnny. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. So many things, because it's been a while. I have been writing this email for weeks because I keep getting distracted and busy. Three dogs now, so it happens a lot. Pictures attached. We were wondering who the third fur baby Mm -hmm. was. Okay. So a few episodes back, you talked about Salem witches. As it turns out, I have a Salem witch in my lineage. Figured I would share that with you both. Wonder if she really was a witch. Sounds like her name is Mary Bradbury. Interesting. Mary Bradbury, Salem witch trials, was the daughter of John Perkins, the first of Ipswich. Wait. That's crazy. Okay, so that it sounds says, familiar. It says the first person in his lineage is Henry Perkins, who had John Perkins. Wow. I just pulled up a picture yeah. of Mary Bradbury. Who had Mary Bradbury. Wow. 
Interesting. So uh, it is his 10th cousin, 10 times removed. There's like, you can look up Mary Bradbury in parentheses Perkins. Um, another thing that was briefly mentioned when B's brother was on was, if I heard correctly, B, you had a turbulent birth and spent time in an incubator. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, for those of you who don't fully know, I just asked my brother if he visited me in the box and I didn't explain why I was in the box. Um, when I was born, my umbilical cord was tied in knots and I was born purple and technically dead. Right. Um, I wasn't crying. I wasn't registering on the tests that they have to give to babies to see if their heart rate, breathing, all that stuff is registering. My mom said she looked at my dad and he looked absolutely horrified. Um, and that was when she realized I wasn't crying. They were able to get me to cry. I'm pretty sure by smacking me. And uh, then I spent like the first week of my life in an incubator. And my dad made the uh, his first dad joke by saying, uh, this is the first and only time you better sunbathe topless, young lady. Because they had me under one of those lamps. And you're like, God, Dad, free the nip. Jeez. Yeah, seriously, Dad. Um, Johnny said, I did too. And it got me thinking that similar to adults having near-death experiences, getting some sort of abilities, maybe these turbulent types of births can lead to abilities as well, because technically we almost died. It's very true. I found that really interesting. Yeah. I deliberately told B not to read this email because I kind of wanted to hear your genuine reaction to it. It's very true. And then my mom's story about, you know, my grandmother when she was pregnant with me, my grandmother seeing the ghosts coming through the walls. Yeah. Weird. And she thinks that has something to do with it. It says the Queen Mary, you need to watch the episode of the Holzer Files about the Queen Mary. I think I did, but I'll rewatch it. Um, Erica Frost is in it. She's the um, psychic medium that was on uh, our tour with Johnny and our tour when we went with another friend. She's the one that told me that I had psychic medium abilities and would kind of pass it to me to tell her what was going on in rooms before she would confirm it. And she's also who taught me how to disconnect from places because uh, spirits had a tendency of coming home with me and ruining my life. Right. So she's the one that taught me the visualization practice where you visualize yourself tied to the place that you're leaving that has the activity. Um, And it can be either a a tied rope or like a plug. And you visualize yourself either cutting the rope or unplugging the plug. Pause for motorcycle. Um, And that visualization is supposed to psychically disconnect you from the spirits right. in the place that you're leaving. So I, that's, I oftentimes even do that. When yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. And Or if I leave like a negative environment, mm-hmm. I'll kind of do it too, just to kind of like, yeah, it's like a weird like meditation. It's actually, it is a it's meditation. meditation practice yeah. for sure. So, and I do practice a bit of meditation. So. Don't we all dabble? Yeah. So Erica Frost is in this episode of the Holzer Files about the Queen Mary. Cool. Um, and talks about why she quit because of the spirits on the ship and then that it has changed and gotten worse. Oh, I kind of want to. Well, I know Johnny was on her podcast. Was he on it or is he going to be on it? I think he's going to be. Okay. I don't know if he, I don't, um, maybe he already recorded, but I don't think it's released yet. He says, definitely watch it or talk to her before going again. I did talk to her recently, her and her co-host of their podcast, Mystical Magical Creatures. Okay. They interviewed me for their podcast, and we talked to the Queen Mary. I mentioned your podcast a few times and said you all should talk. Uh, the episode hasn't aired yet, but it should soon. Anyway, I miss you both. I keep on loving all of these episodes. Also, screw whoever said your banter was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being awesome. Talk to you soon. Johnny. Let's see. What's the name of the other assistant that he acquired? He's got Charlie, Kuma. He's got Charlie, Kuma, and Teddy. Teddy. Who is another little Pomeranian. What He's a, a Pomeranian, I believe. What a good little assistant. He's a floofer. Yeah. We will post the pictures of Johnny's assistants. Yes. And we will definitely have him on the podcast as soon as we figure out how to do a long-distance podcast. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's easy. I think we can do it over Zoom. Yeah. Either that or we will find time to do it when we go home in January. <laughs> Yes, we get another thing. <laughs> Thank you for writing that in. That was super interesting and definitely something to look into. I definitely want to um, find more psychic mediums that I uh, trust mm-hmm. to talk to regarding um, what I experience and what might be going on with me and how to harness that better. Yeah. 
I reached out to some in college when it was literally ruining my life and never got any responses, which kind of felt like um, screaming into a void. It was very annoying. But maybe I could, maybe, maybe if I use the magical podcast word, word they will uh, respond. Yeah. But uh, one of these days, I definitely want me and you to, with their permission, obviously, we would post it to go to a medium so you can meet your grandparents that you never got to meet. Hopefully, yeah, ideally. That. Yeah. Uh, watch it'll just be your mom's parents who you've met and known <laughs> which I'd be totally yeah absolutely happy with either way um but yeah I, I think a part of me would love to connect with the grandparents I never got to meet because definitely yeah they're like so my grandparents were on my dad's side were people that I never got to know mm-hmm. and people that I always wished I had known mm-hmm. just because I hear so many stories about them especially my grandma you definitely look the most like them yeah, I look a lot like my grandma, so I would have kind of loved to have met her and yeah. have experienced that. And, um, I'm definitely that lucky in that sense. Yeah. I got to meet them all. Um, yeah. I never, like, and you know, like, my my grandparents on my mom's side I was close with, but, like, not as close as I wish I had been because they were just so far all the time. Right. It was hard to, like, create, like, a true bond. So it's, like, I kind of miss out on the whole, like, grandparent Mm -hmm. aspect of my life not not for like lack of grandparents but for lack of proximity to my grandparents right so that always bummed me out right no that's fair anyway it would be very interesting to see if they had any messages or to potentially meet them yeah anything they wish they could have said to you it'd be interesting to see if they've seen you my grandma their life live your life i think my grandma on my dad's side would have been like wish you had been a figure skater Uh, right (laughs) she always wanted a figure skater granddaughter they're all going to be like, why are you not married? <laughs> Where's your husband? Where's your children? <laughs> Who is going to carry on the Savard name? <laughs> it's already carried on. I'm good. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right, let's actually Shall dive we dive in. in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Tell Par- me something spoopy. Paranormal. Let's wait, see. Wait, wait. <laughs> um, first of all, I just, you know, we just said this already. I'm going to say it again. Why is it so hard? To find paranormal deeds. I know. They're always like, this place is super haunted. And then we're not going to tell you why. What the heck? (laughs) I don't have time to be watching stuff. Okay. Anyway, I am going to tell you about Madison Seminary. It's a historical building in Madison, Ohio. I don't know this place. Currently in private ownership, it previously functioned as a school, hospital, and as housing for the families of those killed in the American Civil War. Ooh. In 1891, the building was purchased by the Women's Branch of the Grand Army of the Republic and housed veteran nurses and female family members of fallen soldiers. Okay. When no provisions had been made following the defeat of the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. The Women's Relief Corps, and I, the defeat of the Confederacy, the defeat of the Confederacy. I think we get it. Okay. <laughs> Is defeated. Keep waving that flag, guys. Okay. Uh, the Women's Relief Corps. <laughs> it's like 2021. I don't get it. Seriously. Keep waving that defeated flag, y'all. Uh, the Civil War was a very, very long time ago. But yeah. Sorry, truly. Did something shake? Did you feel it? No. Okay. We're having an earthquake on the podcast. That would be fun. Or am I just shaky? That'd be fun. Okay. Where did I go? I lost it. The Women's Relief Corps... As they were known, built the western section of the building. The building was then donated to the state of Ohio when they could no longer afford its upkeep. On June 30th, 1962, the Ohio Department of Mental Hygiene and Corrections. (laughs) Mental hygiene. Mental hygiene. You got a dirty mind. Okay. Yeah, and corrections took over ownership of the building and evicted the Civil War widows still living at the property. You gotta get out. Your husband's dead. Go away. It's time for some mental hygiene. That's messed up. Yeah. Uh, The now prison was called Opportunity Village. It's now a prison. For the mentally unstable, I guess. Yes. So it's It's the mental hygiene and corrections. Corrections means prison. The the, uh, show I watched uh, lovingly referred to it as the nut house. Oh, that's pleasant. Yes. That's... Not problematic. No, not at all. Uh, PC at all. No. The now prison was called Opportunity Village, whereas female prisoners helped care for developmentally disabled or senile women from nearby hospitals. So it's not as bad as it sounds. So these women are prisoners, but 
they were given a purpose. Mm. So they acted as nurses and caregivers for people with uh, who are mentally disabled, people who may be suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia, uh, and people who have like severe mental disabilities, basically. Right. Um, so Opportunity Village, appropriate name. Uh, this project was shelved in 1975 when the county bought the property. So one of the Madison home's most notable residents was Elizabeth Stiles, born and raised in E. Is not not as in Harry. It's with an I. Oh, sorry. Did you see the stars I did, I, in yeah, my I eyes? Yeah, I knew it was going to happen. I got excited. I know. I'm sorry. No relation. Born and raised in East. East Ashtubula, Ashtabula, Ashtabula, Bishmela, I don't know. Good work. Ashtabula. Good work. It is spelt A-S-H-T-A-B-U-L-A. Ashtabula. Thank you. That's what I said. She worked (laughs) as a teacher and seamstress in Chicago for nine years before meeting and marrying Jacob Stiles, also no relation. Uh, (laughs) The couple, I put the couple Mosvid, and the word is moved. (laughs) Okay. The couple moved. (laughs) Move? <laughs> they must bed. Where did Can- they go? To Kansas. Oh. In the late 1850s, where Elizabeth continued to work as a teacher and was not shy about sharing her pro union views in the politically divided new state. Oh, la la. One evening, a group of strangers visited their house and killed Jacob on the spot. <gasps> the men turned out to be uh, Quantrill's Raiders, pro Confederate guerrillas that included young Jesse and Frank James. Yeah, Several months later, Elizabeth was recruited by Abraham Lincoln to spy for the North. She sometimes disguised herself as a Southern grandmother, looking for the wounded father of her granddaughter, actually Elizabeth's 13-year-old daughter, Clara, and other times worked as a nurse in Confederate hospitals. Stiles was once arrested in Jefferson City, Missouri, under suspicions of being a Union spy. By the time the interrogation was over, she had convinced the Confederate officer that she was actually a rebel spy, before releasing her, he gave her a horse and a better gun. So Elizabeth Stiles is... She's packing. She's a G. She's packing. She fooled the Confederacy, and they were like, here's a horse and a gun. Godspeed. <laughs> Go on with your best. Long self. live the Confederacy. So Elizabeth worked <laughs> or not. as... Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Elizabeth's work as a spy ended in 1864 when her identity became known. She was cared for by her son until 1895 when she moved to the Madison home. She lived there until her death in 1898 and is buried on the property. Some speculate she's one of the apparitions there. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So the property passed into private ownership in 1993 and remains on the National Register of Historic Places. It is now owned by Adam Kimmel. No relation. To the talk show host, Jimmy Yes, Kimmel? exactly. No gotcha. relation. He purchased Madison Seminary in 2016 after filming an episode of his web series there. He has now been offering ghost tours and investigations at the property. They call themselves the Mad Crew. (laughs) Snappy. They have a cool name. Why don't we have a cool name? What's our cool name? I don't know. I I asked what our ghost hunter's name was, and you didn't come up with anything. I wasn't feeling creative in the moment. I think we should be the Honey Beasts. Just because that's the wine we're drinking right now? No, I just came up with it off the top of my head, obviously. So people say Madison Seminary is the most haunted place in Northeast Ohio. If you can put like an echo on that, I would like that. Northeast Ohio. No, no, like edit it. I don't know how to do that, so I'm doing it. Figure it out. In 1993, the building was advertised for rent with the following caveat. Can be least cheap. Caution. Building may be haunted. (laughs) Sold. And I love when they like caution in actual ads. Um, lately, activity has gotten worse. It's become more aggressive and ominous. Even the <sighs> workers at the seminary and volunteers' behaviors are changing, including their emotional well-being. Mm. Visitors are getting physically assaulted. Oh. Before the activity was there, but not as aggressive. Okay. Apparitions, not noises. As- yeah, it was just apparitions, noises, your run-of-the-mill haunting. The part of the seminary used as the asylum where the mentally ill were kept hosts the most activity. Shocker. Disembodied voices, shadows, footsteps. The antique wheelchairs in the room will move on their own. No. Yeah. A physical assault happened in the hallway of the of the asylum where a visitor felt as if someone put their arm out and took them out at the neck. Yeah. Um, like clotheslined them. Yeah. No, I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, doors shut on their own, things like that. Um, stains and marks on the floors and walls show that the patients were strapped to beds and walls and struggled. The women especially were treated subhuman or at least according to the current owner, Adam. Oh, God. However, Why are you looking at me like that? However, She's looking me in the eyes. 
However, local historians have no evidence or hearsay that anyone was ever mistreated there, that it did a lot of good for the community. So does the new owner give this horrible asylum story to make it seem more ominous? Hmm. And are the ghosts pissed off because of that? Did he put the scratches on the floor and the walls to make it look worse? Adam. Because there's absolutely no evidence that anybody was ever harmed there. Adam, you know what? Nobody likes a liar. Yeah. Okay, there there are things I don't like. You want to know the things I don't like? Liars. Liars. Cheaters. Looking for things. Looking for things? I hate looking for things. Oh, yeah. I hate looking for things. Yeah, that's a really good thing. I don't like that either. Technology. thieves. Technology that's supposed to be working and it doesn't work. That's who. But I also hate thieves. Low batteries. I think all of these things kind of go together. My all of my things go together, and all of your things kind of go together. Camille Cabello. <laughs> <laughs> these are the things we just like. Okay, in the Civil War rooms where the widows of Civil War soldiers stayed, reports of a seven foot figure traveling from room to room have been made. Things are thrown. Temperatures change. Okay. Um, these are all like standard. Yeah ghostly activity things yeah lists of things in the basement female visitors report their hair being pulled butts touched and groping butts touched butt touch don't touch the butt one theory is that the basement is where female patients and widows were brought against their will and assaulted again hearsay in the operating room people report feeling ill very suddenly flashing lights and moans um so i watched the the uh the classic ghost hunting show ghost hunters uh, oh yeah, I remember that show. Yeah, it it ended and it is now back on Annie oh. um, with one of the original hosts and their the revival first season. Um, it's the sixth up episode and it's on YouTube. It I found it very interesting because they approached their first night of ghost hunting in the seminary, thinking that uh, people were mistreated there, that people were assaulted there, that it was this really horrible, ominous presence in there um and they had a lot of ominous activities so Mm -hmm. um and they were responding more aggressive to it so they would um kind of push it to do things uh they would feel really nauseous they'd feel like they had to leave rooms um there was walking and doors and and things were picked up on the thermal cameras cameras yeah that and then they talked to a local historian that told them that no such thing like that ever happened there that it was actually um a pride of ohio because of how well it treated the widows and the patients Um, what is true and that there's absolutely no evidence of that so on their second night of investigating they all went in there with the knowledge that nobody was mistreated in there yeah and their energy evoked a much different outcome interesting so they uh nobody felt ill nobody felt scared nobody felt um like there was any negative energy around them huh. they experienced little you know bits and bubs here and there but nothing serious it's all a bit psychological isn't it yeah and they confronted adam kimmel at the end of it for saying like look you kind of gave us one side when we went in there and we went in there mm-hmm. thinking one thing and it produced different results than when we went in there thinking the truth Right. It's like, so presenting this difference of events is putting your volunteers in harm's way because what it's doing is causing these spirits and apparitions to aggressively defend themselves. It's creating a negative energy. Exactly. So you go in with negative energy, you're going to get negative energy. 100%. Um, I just found that really interesting. I'd never really seen a ghost hunt approach that way. Yeah. It's and an interesting point parallel. it out that way. Yeah, and it's an interesting parallel to life. Exactly. Kind of like you approach something negatively, you're probably going to get negative results. Right. Life lessons from ghost hunters. Look at that. Any hoosers. Who are your sources? So many. Um, Who did you talk to? MadisonSeminary.com. Oh, you talked to them? I talked to them. Yeah. Um, a NewsHerald.com article. Uh, rumors of haunting persist at Madison Seminary. The uh, Madison Seminary Wikipedia. A Ohio memory dot Ohio history dot org well then. article, architectural afterlife dot com article, and the uh, Ghost Hunters episode six season one on YouTube. Well, snappity snap. So that was that. That was the Madison Seminary. There it is. There it is. There it is. What joy. Joyous day. 
Should I tell you about cults? You should. Let's move on. I am ready. All right. Sun Myung Moon <laughs> was born. <laughs> he was born once. He was born. On January 6th, 1920 in North Korea. All babies want to get born. Yes. At a time when Korea was under Japanese rule. When Moon was 10 years old, his family converted from Confucianism to Christianity. Confucius, say. And joined the Presbyterian Church. As a you wore your socks right. Sorry. I know, I got my motherfucker socks on. I it's, wore them the right she way. She always wears them reversed. She's always <laughs> like, look, I'm wearing my motherfucker socks. And then they're wrong. They're on the wrong foot. <laughs> she did them right today. Good job. I've learned. Sorry. Go <laughs> ahead. I'm a motherfucker Confucius. socks on. Motherfucker. Confucius. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. We're just getting rowdy. <laughs> Uh, as a teenager, Moon studied the Bible and even taught Sunday school. Super Christian. Yeah. So we call the super Christians. <laughs> I really want to say, motherfuckers, fucking with my shit. Watch your wine. I just cheers to everybody. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> it's okay. Now watch my foot. All you mother, mother, uckers, fucking with my shit. I don't even know what you're singing. It's fight on the concords. Oh, okay. I should know that. You should know that. Anyway. Anyway. For reasons. For reasons. When he was 15 years old, Moon says he had a vision in which Jesus himself... Not Jesus. ...appeared and told him to complete the task of establishing God's kingdom on earth and bring peace to the world by becoming apparent to all of humanity. He everybody daddy? He, oh, yeah. Oh, he everybody daddy. Oh, yeah. Okay. After he began preaching his new religious message in... Message? <laughs> so Our church. After he began preaching his new religious message... In the mid-1940s, he was arrested by the communist North Korean government on charges of spying for South Korea. As we all know, North Korea and South Korea are always at war. Yeah. They hate each other. They hate it. What's the bad one? North. Okay. He was given a five-year prison sentence. What's the bad one? What's <laughs> the, the bad one? one is ran by the baby with bangs, right? <laughs> <laughs> the mean baby with bangs. Don't bomb me. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Okay, he was, he was, yes, to confirm. <laughs> he was given a five-year prison sentence in a labor camp after a sentence in camp. I'm sorry. I keep picturing it. It's really funny. Okay. You made me laugh. Okay. okay. One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, okay. This after, is not hearts, hearts. It's <laughs> after his sentence, Moon fled to South Korea near the end of the Korean War. That's the bad one. No, North is. <laughs> no, North is bad. South is good. It's the opposite I've of America. I've never been good with... Okay. <laughs> okay. Where he founded his church and began to formulate his doctrinal views. Izzy, it's not your turn to talk. The, do you have a haunting to tell she us about? She has things to say. Come here. She's haunted. Come here. Are you haunted? Her tongue is so cute. Okay. Why are you complimenting her tongue? It's That's cute. A weird thing to say. Check her butt. <laughs> I don't care. Just, you know, do there. Okay. <laughs> Lounge there, please. Uh, what was I saying? I don't know. He went North he, Korea, bad. He was arrested. Oh, because he, he fled to South. Yeah, so he was given a five year prison sentence and then he um fled to South Korea near the end of the Korean War, where he founded his church and began to formulate his doctrinal views. Yeah, My great uncle him. died in the Korean War, allegedly. Allegedly. I think he escaped. Uh, yeah. Our theory is he fell in love with a Korean lady, mm -hmm. put his dog tags on a uh, man that could not be identified, and, and peaced out. Because my grandma received, like, money randomly. Weird. All the time in the mail. Weird. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting story. Right? Okay. <laughs> the result was a religion based on marriage and family values that included a mix of Confucian and Christian beliefs. Are you good, Izzy? She's, she's frozen. She's like very alarmed by Moosh. She's frozen. Moosh lives here. Do you remember him? Are you senile? Do you need to go why to Madison Seminary? Why don't you just relax? Like, chill, chick. All right. All right. Good, good move. Anyway. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> three years after creating his church, Moon published a textbook called Exposition of the Divine Principle, a reinterpretation of the Bible that his followers treat as holy scripture. He translated the Bible? In a way. The teachings of the divine principle include one. Oh no. There's going to be a test. Oh shit. God is all powerful and all knowing, but is humanized 
because he cannot be happy and complete without the reciprocal love of his children. That's fair. Two, God's original plan was that all men and women are to be sons and daughters of God, just as Jesus was God's son, and that if Adam and Eve had not fallen, all men and women would have been of the same perfection as Jesus. Damn, I could have been perfect. Three, (laughs) that all men and women should become messiahs or persons who are in one mind, who are one in mind and body with God. You're wrong. And that four, all of God's providential work. Providential? Providential? Providential. Providential? Work in history is to establish one God, one God-centered family. And that the family is the foothold that will turn the world around. So what we're talking about right now is the Unification Church. It's a religious movement founded in South Korea by the Reverend Sun Young Moon, originally known as the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Well, that's a mouthful. Yeah, so now it's the Unification Church. That's a that's lot easier. chiller. That's chiller. The religious More sect. Vibe-y. Yeah. The religious sect shifted in the 1990s into a collection of independent organizations associated with the unification movement. Since its founding in 1954, the movement has attracted hundreds of thousands of members in more than 100 countries, mostly in Korea, Japan, and other East Asian Nathan nations. Nathan! Not Nathans. For much of their history, the group was known as Moonies, uh, which is apparently... I've heard of Moonies. Yes. It's apparently now a term that's considered derogatory, but I honestly don't know why. That's fine. I think... Did you look up? Yeah, I think the reason why they don't like to be called Moonies is because it's like people have made... Like the media kind of made a mockery of them. Oh. Rightfully so. But I'm not going to refer to them as that out of, I don't know, I guess respect for them. I don't understand why I'm respecting them, but we're going to carry on anyway. All right, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Right now just sounds like a, a religion, right? Yeah. The unification movement also believes that God's original intent was for Jesus to form a perfect marriage in order to redeem humanity and undo the harm perpetrated by Adam and Eve, because Jesus, the second Adam, was executed before accomplishing his mission, a third Adam. Wait, I'm sorry. Jesus was Adam the second? Yes. So was his middle name Adam? A third Adam. Third Adam. Was needed to form this perfect marriage and complete Jesus's task. See Jesus, Adam Christ? So this third Adam would be recognized as the second coming of Christ. Not the Adam I dated in high school. <laughs> no. The one you did? Oh, yeah, I did date an Adam. I was like, I didn't date an Adam. No, oh, I did. he was arrested for statutory rape. I don't think that one. <laughs> Not that one, hopefully. No. As the perfect man, he would marry the perfect woman and become the true spiritual parents of humankind. Members of the Unification Church regard Moon and his second wife, Hak Ja Han, as these, quote, true parents. Does he decide it? Yes. Okay. Married couples and their families within the movement are regarded as the true children. You know what? I want the confidence to just decide. I, I you know, I decided. To... Well, then you'd be a great cult leader. I would be, man. This emphasis on marriage is the reason for Moon's infamous mass weddings. This is probably where you've heard of them. The Holy Marriage Blessing Ceremony is a core ritual by which couples are removed from the lineage of sinful humanity and grafted into God's sinless lineage. Blessing ceremonies, often labeled, as I just referred to them, as mass weddings, in which some couples are already married, and those that are engaged are later legally married according to the laws of their own countries. 36 couples participated in the first ceremony in 1961 in Seoul, South Korea. The ceremonies continued to grow in scale. Over 2,000 couples participated in the 1982 one at New York's Madison Square Garden. The first outside South Korea in 1992 About 30,000 couples took part in a ceremony, and in 1995, 360,000 couples were wed in a mass ceremony. Wait, 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 wait. So, hold on, a question. Yes. But do you mean, like, he performed this wedding and they were then married to the person that they attended with, or all these people were married to each other? No, they were married to a singular person. Okay, all right, okay. A little Um, less creepy. You're just getting stuff done. we're, we're, We're getting to it. Okay. Moon said that he matched couples. So get this. He's matching people together. So a lot of these couples don't know each other. Yes. Uh, And it's like the greatest privilege to be coupled by Moon himself. Privilege. 
So Moon said that he matched couples from differing races and nationalities because of his belief that all of, that all of humanity should be united. Uh, this is a quote from Moon. International and intercultural marriages are the quickest way to bring about an ideal world of peace. People should marry across national and cultural boundary, boundaries with people from countries they consider to be their enemies so that the world of peace can come that much more quickly, end quote. Mm. So he took a strong stance against racism and racial discrimination. In 1974, he urged the church members to support an African-American president. And this was 1974, reminder. Nice. Um, saying... Quote, we have had enough the of Obama's white... was born. He yeah. sorry, Spartan. It's good. <laughs> he said, we have had enough of white presidents. So let's this time elect a president from the African-American community. Hey, man. What I'm a Mooney. You... Yeah, I, he didn't say African-American community, but I corrected the language because oh. I didn't think it was appropriate. Yeah, so this is like the 1970s. So right. he used a word that I will not use. But Got it. Uh, so I replaced it with the African-American community. Cool. What will you do if I say so? There's no question there. We must never forget that we are brothers and sisters in a huge human family. In any level of community, we must become like a family, end quote. Uh, I'm just going to do a little asterisk because I learned something. And I'm sure you would also want to learn it. Apparently, African-American is also not politically correct. Correct. Yeah. They just want you to say black because a lot of them are not African-American. They're just American. And, and also a lot of them don't know their ancestry at all because they're descendants of slaves and they have yeah. absolutely no idea where their lineage came from. Right. And it's a pain point for them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. There are also people that do not. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's either African-American. You so. can't win. Yeah. Um, it's either African-American or black. Uh, it, both. Yeah. My family is half Jamaican. Right. So they're not, so they're not African-American. And they're not yeah. American. Yeah. They're uh, Jamaican, Jamaican Canadian. Jamaican French Canadian. Oh, another asterisk. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's just a, a good point. Yeah. But uh, so let's not give Moon his flowers just yet. No flowers for Moon. Because he was incredibly homophobic. Ah. So he, he was. He can't win of, them all. He was ahead of his time on one end, and then just you apparently know. not that ahead. If he's using a word, you had to replace. Well, yeah, but also it was the 1970s, and that was a very common word that they used. Not in a negative yeah. way. Got it. There's I know even, yeah, I know what it is. Like educational videos have that word in it. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the word that less was, aggressive N word. Yes, got it. Um, so yeah, he was incredibly homophobic. He compared gay people to quote dirty dung eating dogs. And quote, Not dirty dung eating dogs. And said that he would eliminate them in a purge on God's orders. Yeah, so he all took right, a, Mooney, we gonna fight. <laughs> he took a far left, far right turn. It let's say. Done eating um, dogs. Yeah. So that's why he's obsessed with perfect marriages. Because he's he believes in perfect heterosexual marriages. Perfect man. They woman can be he's marriages. very into the biracial couples. Sweet. But super against same sex couples. Got it. Win some you lose some. Yeah. In 2004, Moon held a coronation ceremony in an office building of the US Senate in which he was crowned, quote, King of Peace, end quote. He sounds it. Yeah. Several other members of Congress were also in attendance, though many of them say they didn't know it was a coronation ceremony. The event was the finale of Moon's, quote, tear down the cross tour. An effort to remove Christian crosses from almost 300 churches in poor neighborhoods, uh, Moon considered the cross to be an obstacle to uniting religions under his leadership. He thought the cross represented only Christianity and he wasn't into that. Got it. A promotional video released by Moon's International and Interreligious Federation for World Peace claimed the ceremony marked the dawn of the era of eternal peace kingdom, one global family under God. Hmm. After Moon's death from pneumonia in September of 2012, Ah. at the age of 92, the movement split into various competing factions. His widow, Hakja Han Moon, is considered by many in the movement to be the uh, like a messiah or uh, the mother of humankind. She founded the Women's Federation for World Peace International. Moon's eldest living son, Hyun Jin Preston Moon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where the Preston came from, but... Uh, okay. Oh, just wait. Okay. Leads the Family Peace Association, while the youngest son, yeah. Hyun Jin Sean Moon... Sean! Star- <laughs> ...started the Sanctuary Church. Sure. How is it spelled? The wrong way or the right way? Scene. <sighs> On February 28th, 2018, the Unification Movement offshoot 
Sanctuary Church held a special blessing ceremony. As the invitation noted, the couples were asked to bring the accoutrements of the nation of Chan Tu Guk. Who it is? <laughs> It's a nation of cosmic peace and unity, a universal cosmic. group of individuals aspiring to build a world centered on principles of true love and true service. That sounds fancy. Along with the crowns, the members were to bring a rod of iron, which was designated by the second king, Moon's son, as an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, or equivalents such as an AK semi-automatic rifle, representing both the intent of and the ability to defend one's family, community, and nation of Chan Il Guk. Or as Americans Sorry, like Chan to call it. Guk. Or as Americans like to call it their Monday through Friday gun. <laughs> yeah. Couples unable to purchase and legally transport such a rod of iron because of laws barring the purchase of such Dirty. weapons or other reasons were invited to purchase a $700 gift card from a gun store as evidence of their intent to purchase a rod of iron in the future. To not do so, if one is legally and personally able, the announcement says it would be a sign of great disrespect to the second king of Chan Ju, Chan Tu Guk, and to True Father himself. I don't know whatever happened with these rods of iron, but uh, I, they, they were asked to bring them. They in. sound phallic. Yeah, they just wanted them to own them. I don't Why know, do really. men have to have rods of something? I don't know. But um, okay, so on a recent Sunday morning, twelve hundred unificationists fill the cavernous ballroom at the Manhattan Center in New York City. They leap to their feet and wave their arms as a rock band plays a mix of Fleetwood Mac ah! and worship music with wow. a thumping beat. Whoa. They fall silent as the lights dim and burst into applause when theatrically a single light comes up to reveal a woman behind a podium. Uh? How are you this morning? Says In Jin Moon. I bring greetings from true parents, she says, referring to Sun Myung Moon and his wife, Hak Ja Han. She speaks without notes for 40 minutes, weaving personal anecdotes with references to the Bible, Aristotle, and Christian leaders. She is the 44-year-old daughter of Sun Myung Moon. Sounds like she needs some notes. She's a graduate of Harvard Divinity School. When her father appointed her to head the U.S. church before his passing, she focused on one simple goal, to win back young people. Well, she says, laughing, it's been quite challenging. In our first interview with a reporter since taking over the church, she tells NPR that a major challenge came from the Asian church elders who were upset that a woman was selected to run the American church. Then they balked at her vision, a national church, which she calls Love and Life Ministries, <laughs> based in New York City with smaller satellite churches. That sounds like an Etsy cult. Mm -hmm. In Jin Moon, replaced the old holy songs with rock and roll and fluorescent lighting with concert lighting and a giant video screen. I, so Hill song. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Got it. She said, I think a lot of the leaders want to put an end to love and life after the first couple of weeks, but we just kept at it. She did so because she faced a problem that plagues even established churches. How do you transmit the passion of a convert to a child who merely inherits the faith? Right. So like, yeah. A child who's just born into the faith. Right. The first generation made a conscious decision to join in that they had a conversion experience. They had some kind of spiritual experience that made them feel, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. Whereas for those of us, myself included, she said, who were born into this movement or born into this family, we had no choice in the matter. So In Jin Moon did what the evangelicals do. She used music and technology to spark spiritual experiences. She says, it is working. Some have called it electricity running through my body, feeling of warmth, just feeling as if there's they're engulfed in love. Uh, for those kids who come and have that conversion experience, then their belief system becomes theirs. Um, so I'm going to read an experience from a, a man named Steve Hassan, I think. Okay. Um, he said, I was 19, and it was the beginning of the spring semester at college when three women dressed like students asked if they could sit at my table in the cafeteria. They were kind of flirting with me. I thought I was going to get a date. At some point, they said they were part of a student movement trying to make the world a better place. I said, are you part of some sort of religious group? They said no. They also didn't say that they were celibate and that Reverend Moon was going to match people and tell them when they could and could not have sex. Hmm. If they had, I would have said, you're crazy, leave me alone. 
I say this to highlight the point about deception. People don't knowingly join cults, which is true. Yeah, very true. Little did I know within a few weeks, I would be told to drop out of school, donate my bank account, look at Moon as my true parent, and believe my parents were Satan. I didn't even believe in Satan until I met the group. I haven't heard of the Moonies, and I didn't know about Moon himself until several several weeks into my indoctrination. These new people picked me up on a Friday evening and drove me to a very expensive mansion, which turned out to be one of their headquarters. As we were driving through the gate, they said, by the way, we're having a joint workshop with the Unification Church. I said nobody had told me about a workshop or a church. They did the classic mind control technique. They turned it around and made it my issue. What's the matter? They said, are you closed minded? I was put in a dormitory and couldn't sleep. I was planning to get out of there the next day, but morning came and I was told I had missed the van. They said I would regret it for the rest of my life if I didn't stay and talked me into a 40 day separation where I couldn't communicate with my friends or my family. Each evening we had to write feedback at the end of the last day. I remember writing. I am too blown away to write anything now. My mind was exploding at lectures. They had introduced the idea that all of human history was culminating, that God was sending the Messiah, and that Third World War was going to happen in the next three years. What did I want to do? Did I want to be part of this great and glorious thing, or did I want to be selfish and go back to my little life? Within three months, I was a cult leader. Whoa. I got very deeply involved, and I got to the point where I was being told to think about the country I wanted to run when we took over the world. End quote. So that took a turn. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I watched this documentary... It was called Married to the Moonies. Um, it was literally on Vimeo. Like, it was like... It's a random... It was like some random thing. It actually kind of felt like Married at First Sight kind of vibe. Okay. Where it was like these, like, like three couples that hadn't met yet, but they were, like, going to be married in the Unification Church. And it was like, kind of, they were kind of awkward and cute. And, like, they were like, he's really good looking. Like, I'm really excited to marry him. Like, uh-huh. I saw his picture. And, like... And then it got dark and twisty. And, like... It didn't really get that dark and twisty. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, it doesn't see. I mean, there's like no drinking the Kool Aid or anything no. like that. It's just. It's like some brainwashing is yeah. occurring. But it seems like a lot of the people that join are very consensual and they're very like into the idea of celibacy and not, right. not and like I think like they get married and they don't have sex for like several months to just prove their loyalty. Like even though they're married, it okay. takes a while. There was like one couple who were like, "Oh my god!" Like. We really want each other. It was like really funny. And I was like, they're cute. Like, so it was kind of interesting. But um, my other sources were Wikipedia, Gospel Coalition article called Nine Things You Should Know About the Unification Church by Joe Carter. Uh, NPR's Unification Church Woos a Second Generation by Barbara Bradley Haggerty. And a Guardian article called I Was a Mooney Cult Leader by Steve Hassan, which is, right. I read an excerpt of that. Uh, his family came in and did like a whole intervention with him and like saved him, basically. rescued him from the church. Um, so that that's kind of an interesting one because it's a little bit more of a church than it is a cult, but the way that it's presented and the way that they draw people in right. is extremely cult-like and some of their beliefs are extremely cult-like, yeah. but I mean, it's grounded in Christianity. So it's kind of interesting. Controversial statement, but 90% of churches are cults. It's just some of them are better at hiding that. Mm-hmm. Than others. 100%. Yeah. That's the Unification Church. I've definitely heard of them. Yeah. That didn't know the story. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard about the mass wedding at Madison Square Garden. Like you I see, didn't. You see no. this picture of just like brides and grooms just like covering the floor. It's crazy. No. Yeah. I didn't know. I haven't. That's it's crazy. Wild. Yeah. I mean, at least it was, he wasn't just marrying them all to each other. That would have been wild. That would have been more culty. That would have been more culty. He's bad at culting. So yeah. it wasn't necessarily terribly awful, just more wacky. Yeah. Just a weird, still a cult, weird thing that people want to do. And you know what? Some people, they, they, they don't want to spend time meeting somebody and getting to yeah. know somebody to marry them. They're like, this sounds like way easier and way better for me. I'm going to do it that way. Yeah. So, you know, to each his own, I guess. Very true. Yeah. Just yeah. don't be a homophobe. Yeah. Like for real, it's not that hard. I don't like that part. <sighs> I mean, in Pride Month. In Pride Month? Every month is Pride Month. In my house. <laughs> Hells, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. There yeah. it goes. What's your, what's a, what's a wonderful? I kind of have like a twofer. You have a twofer? 
Let's have it. That's good because I don't feel like you've had a wonderful time lately. No, so I'm happy I, you have there's too. like been some wonderful things happening lately. I like I love that for you. So go ahead. Um, the first one, I'm just gonna I'm gonna give a hint. Go ahead. And that hint is, I'm kind of like a prettier Jesus. Uh, yes, her Lord and Savior. My okay. Lord and Savior, Lord, has released a new song. She has. She's blessed us. Tanya has been waiting for this. For like four years. I'm so happy for her. So uh, that, Solar Power by Lord is out. Mm -hmm. Go listen to it if you haven't. It's cool. Has a cool like. It's vibey. It's summery. It's got like a George Michael primal scream vibe. Mm -hmm. It's so good. There's a little bit of Tribe Called Quest in it. I love it. Yeah. I'm into it. Um, My second How Wonderful. Uh Uh-huh. Is that Milo Ventimiglia is going to be on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? <laughs> Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I don't know as what or what the deal. I is, don't know. We don't, I don't know. Care. But it's 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 just coming home. It's to like Amy and Dan. Yeah, that only makes sense to hardcore Gilmore Girls fans. Yeah. <sighs> so Amy and Dan invented Gilmore Girls and wrote Gilmore Girls and wrote Jess, invented Jess, born Jess, if you will. Yeah, we're clearly Jesses in this household. We are Jess girls in this yeah. house. Jess is her Luke. Is Rory's 100% Luke. 100% her Luke. 100%. Like, if the story continued on, it would yeah. be like the will they, won't they. Yeah. Just like Lorelai and Luke. I want to see this. <sighs> Do this. This is Us Ends next season. So, Milo's free. Do this. But I, I'm totally in. If my, I hope Milo's not just a guest. I hope maybe this is his job after This Is Us. Like that would make me regular. happy. Yeah, me too. I saw uh, a paparazzi photo of him filming and it was exciting he was with mitch oh, i can't wait so hopefully he's you know with mitch wink 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 uh one could only wish and okay um I, fine i'll do a two for let's how go. about that because it's been a minute you know what we got so many wonderfuls it's been a minute you know what we did guys what do we do we went to the movies we did we went to the movies we sure did in person we didn't talk about this yet we didn't talk about this yet we saw cruella oh so good um it wasn't even our first choice we wanted to either see a quiet no we want to see a quiet place just a quiet place oh uh, yeah not either. or cruella it but. was yeah it was a quiet place but there was no times that worked so we saw cruella and oh boy did it not disappoint no it was so good it was so fun we had low expectations and uh boy did it exceed it yeah i mean it wasn't hard to Exceed low expectations. Um, I was like, I'm in a movie theater. I don't really care. But the it was fashion, so good. the music, oh. the visuals, the attitude. So uh, freaking. Yeah. Go see the good. Emmas slay being villains. Yes. Dual villains, if you will. They're both like, like so fantastic in it. Corolla was a whole lot of fun to see. I will definitely want to watch it again. Yes. Um, and we're going to see In the Heights on Friday. We're not watching it on HBO Max. We're no. giving it our money. To go see it in theaters on Friday. Very excited. Uh, My second, maybe it's not a how wonderful, um, but I'm going to be the five millionth person to give flowers to Bo Burnham for Inside. Oh, yeah. Um, Because that was, that is stuck with me. Same. When we were watching it, I had the same feeling I had when I watched Make Happy, which is just like, I really hope he has a good therapist. (laughs) Um, And, you know, is he, does he need a hug? Yeah. Um, but then I thought about it for days. I'm still thinking about it. Same. I need to watch it again. And honestly, yeah, I want to watch it again too. It was, it was some, uh, I think the reason I like Bro Burnham so much is because the unspoken thing is that 99% of comedians have severe mental health issues and really struggle with depression. And they are the types that cope with comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, Bo does not hide that. No. He does not hide that he has severe mental health issues, that he has uh, at least suicidal ideology mm-hmm. um, and severe depression, and that this year, like, for, like it has been for many of us, um, really tested his mental health, and he displayed that. Uh, he didn't edit it out. Um, right. I think the parts where he showed his, like, kind of rage moments – was not put on um, because for me, that was when I identified the most with what I was seeing was when he was freaking out because things weren't going the way he wanted it to go. I was like, that's how my anxiety manifests. Yeah. So I think it was the collective uh, response to his special is that was me this past year personified and also put to funny music. Yeah, I think it was highly relatable Mm -hmm. and it felt, well, like in a lot of his commentary on 
social media Mm -hmm. and um, just kind of like the generational expectation of how you communicate with people. I don't know. It was very interesting. He's a genius. Yeah. It was and like the way he he used like just like really obvious comedy. Yeah. To point out stuff that like, you know, is obvious. Right. Like we don't. We don't admit to. We don't admit. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, Jimmy Kimmel called it uh, Beatles level genius. Mm. So that's that's high praise from a very established comedian. To another one, yeah. To another comedian. I, my One of my favorite bits would have to be um, during sexting yes. when he had an entire speech of, about consent yeah. uh, projected on the wall behind him during that song. Yeah, that was the best part. That was definitely a very interesting part. Um, but more than that, I just... Uh, bu- I've never heard anything bad about Bo Burnham. Yeah. We're obsessed with this account called Demois on uh, Instagram mm-hmm, that's yeah. about, like, basically celebrity insiders. It's like celebrity gossip girl, basically. Yeah. And uh, today's topic was Bo Burnham. Yeah, I saw And that. it was nothing but he's wonderful. He's very kind. He's very genuine. He's, he's very generous. He's very tall. <laughs> he's very tall. Yeah. He just walks around with us. And his. I love that they were just, like, um, his girlfriend yeah. is not just his girlfriend. She's Lorraine... Lorena's Lor- yeah 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 she's she's the director of Hustlers yeah I can't say her last name so it's not because I don't know her it's name because it's very Italian it's like Lorena Scafoli or something like that yeah she is the yeah badass that brought us Hustlers that gave us J Lo as Ramona so she is awesome in her own right Lorene Scafaria we were close we were close but yeah she's an amazing director so she is. check out her work but uh, yeah we pick so, for yeah next we should week? we should. What you got? Exorcisms and demons. I have true crime. True crime and exorcism and demons. This is a good doozy. one. I have a doozy for us. Oh, you do? Did you already do your research? No, but I know what I'm going to pick. It's going to take a lot of research, I think. Okay. Because it's kind of a high profile topic. Interesting. But um, I think it'll be interesting. Interesting. And uh, now that I have my weekends are Thursday, Fridays. You'll have a lot of, a have a lot of time, time to research if it's I want very to. very so. true. Very interesting. That's it. That's it, guys. Do you want to take a stab at the spiel? Do you remember it? <sighs> it's been so long. I just want to put you on the if spot. If you go to howawfulpodcast.com, you can find all of the things. All of the shings. All of the shings of where we are. If you go to patreon.com slash howawfulpodcast, um, you can find things that you can pay for. <laughs> it's, a, it's, not, it's not a lot of money. It's literally just queens. Like five bucks. Yeah. Um, an amount you won't even realize is missing from your bank account, but will mean the world to yes, us. and you can watch a video you that we've uploaded. You can watch our Roosevelt video. Mm-hmm. And we want to upload more videos. And the way that we do that is by you going there and giving us those five measly. It's a cup of coffee a month. It's a cup yeah. of coffee a month. And it means that we can go explore haunted locations and give you better, bigger content. Amen, sister. Patreon.com slash how awful podcast. You can follow us on all the social medias except Pinterest um, at how awful podcast. You can email us at how awful podcast at gmail.com, just like our good friend Johnny Perkins did. Mm-hmm. Um, let us know if you have some interesting lineage. Yeah. Um, let us know your haunted tales. Have you been possessed by a demon? Have you been abducted by aliens? Please, God, Tanya wants to know. Please, God, tell me if you've been abducted by freaking aliens. Yep, yep. Have you been murdered? Have your friends been murdered? Have people been murdered? Let us know. Bonnet. Are you a medium? Let Get us off know. Of life. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> I sounded exactly. If you're Bon Jovi, like you it. can email us at howawfulpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Sup? Oh my God! If Bon, if, if John Bon Jovi, wait. First of all, is that his real name? Yes, it is. It is Jonathan Bon Jovi. If Mr. Bon Jovi were to email us, you know what I love. You know who would cry? My mom. My mom. You know what I love Our about? Moms. You know what I love about John Bon Jovi? Huh? Is he opened a, a restaurant or kitchen, if you will, in his hometown, um, and you only pay what you can afford to pay. And whatever you pay goes towards somebody who can't afford to pay to Aww. eat there. So um, the houseless community can walk in and have a free home cooked, chef cooked meal because it's already been paid forward. Shut it. Isn't that amazing? I, you know what? I hope he's not problematic. I don't know. How are you much. problematic if you do that? Well, he's been in this business for so long. He's been married to the same woman the entire time and not a bad story has it cometh. So I, hope I not. think. 
Mr. Bon Jovi is a good guy. I've just come to realize we can't have nice things. We can't have nice so things. So I've just, I've lumped John Bon Jovi into maybe we can't, but maybe we, we can. can. I have we no can idea. have John Bon Jovi. Please give me John Bon Jovi nice stories. Nice stories. Yeah. Do you have good John Bon Jovi stories? <laughs> why, where, why are we talking why? about John Bon Jovi? Anyway, I've been Tanya Lee. <laughs> Who the heck are you? I've been B. B. Bon Jovi? I've been B. Bon Jovi. <laughs> what? What was that song? Catch us outside next week. What was that song? What was that song? With John Bon Jovi when we were kids. Because I'm wanted. Oh. <laughs> what the it fell out of my brain. Uh, I'm just, you know what? I'm just singing the Chipotle Bo Burnham song in my head. <laughs> How am I supposed to get the beans when it doesn't even fit? How can I fit the cheese if it doesn't even fit? That's not the words, but that's <laughs> something like that. As always, we've been B and Tanya Lee. Our logo was created by MJ Savard and our theme music courtesy of Nikki Lou.